about almost 70% here as an international student and uh, about 30% as an early career professional. Kudos to all of you for attending this session. We're gonna have so much fun learning about networking techniques and how to overcome all those challenges when it comes to networking. Um, before we kickstart, I also want to learn about one thing that comes to your mind when someone talk about, you have to go out and network, meet people, talk to strangers. What is the one thing that comes to your mind when you think about networking? Can you share with us? You can use the same link that I just shared before, or you can just text to this number, 22333, and just put my name in there, Quansico022, and just type in, you know, in the chat um, message. Let me see, anyone? Okay. Activities hold together, intimidating. COVID-19, I love that, right? When it comes to networking, the first thing right now, COVID-19, how can we meet with people in person? No more coffee chat. Yes, overwhelming for sure. Executive power, okay, more intimidating. Mm -hmm. Suits up, <laughs> I like that, <laughs> I like that, suit up. Uh, Eating, you mean like having lunch together? Okay, reply time, opportunities, rewarding. Oh, that's that's great. Um, okay, all right, all right. Thank you for sharing with me. This is so amazing. Yes, all right, we keep coming, keep coming. We're gonna talk about this, you know, in the future, maybe I can put this together and write a blog to help answer all of these questions, some of the key takeaways from this call as well. All right, all right, thank you for sharing with us here. I will pass the stage to Fernanda, our wonderful Fernanda, my superstar. Fernanda, what do you have for us today? So oh, hello everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me for be this mentor of this event. I'm super excited. So I'm going to welcome you everyone. Thank you for attending to this episode six of building a networking game plan to land jobs in the financial services industry. First, I'm going to say some housekeeping of this event. First, the session is being recorded. The attendees, please move your microphone or turn off your camera when you are not presenting. And also, you can ask questions throughout the presentation using the chat box or ask live at the end of the session. First, I'm going to introduce myself. I am Fernanda Garcia. I am a student from the University at Albany. I am doing my master's degree in accounting, and I'm going to intern next summer for Deloitte as an audit and assurance intern in the financial market services. I'm super excited I have been in your place. Like I remember one year ago, I was also a student from ICOA. I was intimidated by talk to people, even to start a message to get a networking call. I have been in your feed, but I know that if you trust the process, learn from other professionals and take notes and feel free to ask anything you would like to know in this session. Marie Helen and Kwan are incredible professionals that will give you amazing tips. So now I'm going to introduce Marie Helen. Marie Helen has built an international career in the financial services in the areas of business and talent management, as well as relationship management with ultra high net worth clients. Marie Helen is currently working as a chief of staff at New York Life Ventures, the corporate venture capital business for New York Life, which is the largest mutual life insurance company in the US. Marie Helen came to the U.S. as an international student and developed a passion for organizations with a mission over the years. Prior to joining New York Life, Marie Helen worked for Ascent, the leading nonprofit financial organization for business professionals in North America. A mother of two bilingual child children, ages of five and eight, Marie Helen is passionate about advancing women and has been actively engaged with the Financial Women's Association since she started her career in the financial services. Marie Helen is always looking for recommendations on personal development books and joined Toastmaster International to develop her public speaking skills. Welcome, Marie Helen. 
Um, I'm going to introduce Coach Juan Seagal. Juan is an experienced human capital consultant and a career coach for international students. Originally from Thailand, Kwang moved to the U.S. and joined one of the world's top consulting firms in Chicago. With 15 plus years of experience at global companies like BMW, Accenture, and Deloitte, she helped companies to develop talent development initiatives that impacted employees worldwide. Today, as the founder of ICOA, her mission is to empower international students for employability and serve international educators as a trusted advisor. Guan holds an executive MBA through a Sassing and Caleb School of Management Global Partnership and a certification of senior professionals in HR by HRCI. So welcome all of you and excited to start this event. Thank you so much, Fernanda. And you know, you're my superstar because you started your career job hunting during the peak of the pandemic. Yeah. right? Last year, and you got only bachelor's degree, and we know how hard it is for anyone without experience looking for jobs. And you, as an international, looked for a job without so much of experience and finally landed job. But, you know, because of the H-1B thing, you got back to your master's degree. Yes. But what happened recently? Can you share good news with us? Yeah, so I actually got a job offer with Deloitte. Uh -huh. And actually I got because of networking. So I attended the Alpha Career Fair, this Hispanic organization. And it was a convention where you were able to network with the professionals, partners of any division you were interested in. Of. So I click with this employee who was also from Latin America. She also was an immigrant and worked in audit the division I was interested in. So after the event, she, she told me, hey, send me your resume, send to HR. And two weeks after, I got the invitation for an interview. I didn't even apply to the website, to the traditional website application. Then I got many calls with people from the firm from Deloitte. So when I went to the interview, I already knew what is the day to day, what they were looking for, what are like the greatest skills. So I was able to tailor my answers to ace the interview because of networking. Because when you go through the typical website, you are not finding these key little secrets that will make you stand out. So that's why I decided, okay, which questions should we ask in this event? And I was thinking, what are the, the main questions I always wonder when I start this journey through networking? So my first question is, how to make a great impression during the first minutes of interaction? I would say like, Juan, could you answer this one? Absolutely, I can kickstart and, you know, can't wait to hear Mary Helen tips as well, because she's an amazing mentor. I also learn from her every day as well. Since I got a chance to meet with her at Ascend, she's an amazing networker and meaningful, you know, build meaningful connections through volunteering work and such an amazing professional to me. Thank you so much, Mary Helen, for joining us today. So to answer your question, Fernanda, you know, it really depends on what channel you are going to meet with that person and the timing and everything, right? There is no one size fit all, but something that I can share a little bit, you know, as someone who is also an international what not born and raised here in the US and English is my second language, right? So cultural differences, language barriers is the number one thing that I feel I felt so intimidated when it comes to networking. I'm not to be honest, at the beginning of my job searching here, I tried to connect with someone uh, in Thailand to introduce me someone here in the US. And I got a chance to connect with amazing people that want to connect me with their bosses like director level. But at that time, I feel like my language was my not up to par. Uh, I can hear my voice echoing, sorry about that. And at that time I was so intimidated and I didn't pursue that conversation with the you know, top ranking professionals because of the fears of not being enough, right? So first of all, you have to remove that mindset of not being enough because you are so enough. Something that you have, lots of American professionals here don't have. So be proud of being an international. That is the first thing I want to say to you. And the next thing is also learn about networking etiquette. One thing in America is 
being friendly. Being friendly means polite, opposite to where I'm original from in Thailand. You know, being polite means listen, be humble, right? And yeah, just like keep quiet, lower your voice. That is being polite. But here in America, you don't have to do all of that. You may have to do a little bit of small talk, make small talk, right? Uh, instead of jumping into the questions right away or introducing your uh, yourself right away, ask them how are you. You know, from that conversation, just that kickstart with that question, you can learn so much more about them. How was your day today? You know, if you got a chance to speak in the uh, at the end of the day, right? So don't be afraid to make small talk. There are lots of small talks. Uh, tips out there. You can just pick some few, a few phrases that you can use until you be able to improvise. So have that training wheels for yourself when you start networking, and after that, enjoy the ride. So Mary <laughs> Helen, please. Uh, anything else that um, you have for us? I'm excited to oh. learn more. Oh, thanks so much, Kwon. Uh, absolutely. Thank I think. Uh, hold on. Let me mute our. Let me have let me go lower. Okay. And then I'm going to unmute our speaker. Sorry about that. There we go. All right. Perfect. I think I'm good to go. This, this was such a great tip, Kwan. And, and as I was listening to Fernanda and you speak similar, similar to both of your examples, came here as an international student to the States, um, was raised predominantly in France. So to me, the whole concept of networking was something that I was completely unfamiliar with. And I came here to go to grad school. So I was I was definitely, you know, older and really had to get accustomed to what it meant to network. But um, I think, you know, Fernanda, when she told us her story there on how she she got that connection made through the career fair and connecting with someone at Deloitte, it was clear to me that she created that that very unique connection, finding something in common, right, with that person that she was interacting with. And actually, Fernanda, you leveraged that background of yours, that international background of yours to your advantage, which I think, again, to Quan's point, is such a unique thing about all of us here that we should always remember when we're connecting and making those those meaningful connections because they really do take us a long way. Um, so again, chiming into Quan's point, really being prepared to create that initial connection very quickly on, I think is really, really smart and important to do. Um, you know, we're all in this COVID world still operating with screens and, and we're meeting people like we are today. So my tip would be always come in with a big smile, whether that's in person or on a screen, because that just also hits the mark in terms of your enthusiasm, and what you're communicating to the other side. But I think, again, just breaking the ice somehow, right? What's the weather like, but also just, where are you calling from today if you're on a screen, right? That's another great way to just start the conversation going and, and making everybody at ease. The other thing I would just add um, to, to Quan's point is just being mindful again from a cultural standpoint. We are in the US, we're connecting with people in America. And as I reflect a little bit about financial services, the truth is people are very busy in their day. So one of the things that I would say also in terms of making that good impression in addition to breaking that ice nicely, is also be prepared with that pitch, right? That little elevator pitch of yours so that you can really communicate why you're having this connection today. How did you get connected with that person? Just reminding them a little bit of the context around this and what is it that you really want to achieve from that call or that connection that you're making at that point in time. Well, I love all your points. And actually, I could share my personal story with my last interview at Deloitte. Actually, we start to talk about how is the weather in Albany? Oh, how is classes starting? Are you liking your classes? So after that, the intimidation moment was over. So I would start like a normal conversation. And for example, another tip I would like to add is when Marie Helen said, have the purpose of your call. What are you, what do you want to get out from that? So on my other interview, I got into my interviewer's LinkedIn and I knew that she, she did a podcast like two weeks before that. So I had the opportunity to listen to her podcast. So before even we start the interview, I told her, oh, well, first of all, I want to congratulate you from your podcast because I learned all of this and you really inspired me. And she was like, oh, wow, thank you so much. So boom, great point, unique point where you can differentiate from other people. 
So coming to that, I also have a follow-up question that would be my second one. That is, what do you think is the common mistake that the students make when they are trying to network within the financial industry? Like I would like to ask to Marie Helene. Yeah, yeah, I think that's I think that's a great question. And um, I certainly, if I was to think back about myself, talk to myself, uh, you know, 10 years ago, even a little bit longer than that, um, I would have this message. It's persist. Persistence is key. And the reason why I say this, especially when you're connecting with people in financial services and putting back into context of the world that we've been living in over now, almost two years, everything is, 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 is blended. Everything is, is all together. Your personal life, your, your work life, family, and, and, and everything is, is all meshed together. So people actually, interestingly, are just even more busy right, in, in, in their day-to-day than they have been even before. And so with that, I'm making this point because it happened many times with me where I was reaching out to people when I came out of school, I was reaching out to network and I sent the email and I wait and I wait and then, and then nothing happened. I didn't get a follow on, like I didn't get a response. And the mistake I made is that I took it personally. I said, oh, they, they just don't want to talk to me, you know, because I'm so junior or they've had many emails like mine and blah, blah, blah. And that was a big mistake. So my lesson learned after a little bit was to persist and to continuously follow up with people using as many channels as you possibly can. Um, don't take this personally. If people don't respond to your first outreach, it is oftentimes completely normal because oftentimes we use the email route and which is clearly the, the best one, the most effective one uh, to communicate with people. That being said, so many people use email, so you get hundreds of emails in a day. And sometimes that email just gets lost. And that's just the way of life. Um, I will not hide that I've done it sometimes. I've, someone's reached out to me and I just, I blank out because it just fell through a hole of 150 other emails. So um, the, the, that one big mistake would be, yes, not persisting. And I, I wanted to share a story because I was, I was at a fireside chat with um, this woman who, who worked at BNP Paribas and she was heading a group there. And she was reflecting also on her experience. And she said, when she came out of school, she had in her head, I want to work for this bank and I want to work in that specific area that she, she was working, which was leverage finance. And she said, every day, every day, she emailed the head of the group every single day. And he never responded to her. And then after emailing, she called him. She called left messages. She called left messages. And then at some point, one day, he actually picked up and said, okay, now you have my attention. And I'm sharing this because that was what that persistence that she had was what got her the job. So I think also coming back to, to Fernanda, your point, the, the idea of just don't give, don't give up, just you know, persist, um, things will work out is very important for you to believe in. And don't take things, the most important thing is to not take it personally. Um, but I'm happy to share a few tips on, on ways to, to, to go around, you know, if one route doesn't work versus the other. But I wanted to hand it over to Quan if you had any thoughts around this too. Uh, those are such a great tips and insights, Mary Helen. And I, I would do the same as, you know, that VP of the bank. Like if someone so per- persistent like that, trying to reach out to you, it means she is really hungry for the job and she would do whatever she could to be successful in that role. Right. Exactly. That is the top of your of your mind for sure as a leader. So that's such an inspiring story. And um, I can share a little bit from the cultural perspective as well, because I have seen lots of networking emails that tend to be so long, like, oh, my God, like if it's one page, it's like going to be the full page of introducing yourself and so hard to digest. So remember one thing, networking email, it means you already, you know, ask someone a favor to read your email and respond to you, make it concise, make it short. And it doesn't mean that you're not polite of making the email short, you can make it sound so friendly. And instead of just, you know, selling your pitch right away in that email, talk about them in that email, like Fernanda just mentioned, mentioned about 
she learned, she did some research about the other person's podcast. Talk about that podcast, how that so inspired you. What did you learn? What is your key, one key takeaway, right? And then ask to connect one-on-one. -on -one. Make it easy. You can even build your own, you know, calendar where you don't have to go back and forth with the uh, schedulings, right? Sometimes you can even share your calendar and it's free out there. So those are the tips that I just want to share quickly here because it's something that I used to, is the mistake I used to make as well. Yeah, and I think to your point, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit also about that pitch we talked about in the beginning, right? How to make that, that really good first impression. And, and I often go by, you know, the journalist methodology when they're writing an article, go by the, the W's, like, why, why are you messing, why are you reaching out? You know, who, who recommended that person to, you know, you to reach out to them? Um, you know, what's the purpose, right? Um, you know, what, just giving context around all that. And if you can answer those, why, what, who, where, how, in an email or, or in your pitch when you're connecting with someone, I think that can make such a tremendous positive impact. Because again, the message will be crisp, concise. And to your point, Kwan, you will get people's attention that way. Um, you know, another thing I just wanted to share to, to Fernanda's point, you know, oftentimes people will ask me, well, what do I put on the subject of an email? How do I how do I get oh, yes. people's attention, right? Because, right. you know, you want to you wanna make sure that person will open up your message. And, you know, taking Fernanda's example, for example, saying something about, I love your podcast or something like that, that will make someone open up that message. I can, I can guarantee that, right? 100% <laughs> agree with you. Yes, that's a great tip, right? It's, it's like, just imagine yourself that, um, you know, as a reader, what kind of email that you usually open, right? If it's come to, uh, if the email is like, you know, 30% off, you know, that it's a sales email, you may delete it if you're still busy and you don't want to purchase anything. The same way with networking email. If you try to sell yourself at the beginning, maybe, you know, you, it's, you're going to turn someone off. So try to talk about them. That's amazing advice, Mary Helen. That's amazing. Like so listening to your points of views, remember me when I used to start when I was without a guidance. I used to be the person who sent like a long paragraph to people because in my culture, you cannot say things straight. If you get to the point, it sounds offensive. So when it's very funny when I come back to Ecuador, it's like, OK, I'm listening, but come to the point. What do you want to tell me? And it's okay to be first like that. But if you are here listening to this webinar, you are one step ahead. Because I always say, look for people who can help you, who can mentor you. Because when we come to this country, we don't know all of these little secrets, but it's in your responsibility. I realized like I was what, two years, but I was trying to get into organizations, but I was never in an organization who actually helped me how is the US culture, how we have to reach out to professionals in this country. And the moment I started to listen to Coach Kwang tips, everything changed because I was by myself trying to find jobs for two years, nothing, wasting so much time with inefficient techniques. But when I started to do the right, but I was like, okay, I'm doing everything and nothing is working out. I might be doing something wrong. Something that is actually not working. So let's look for other opportunities. So I always encourage all of you, go to webinars, go to organizations, communities, people who have been in your shoes because they know how is the path. They already build their path to go for it. So the next advice is like, it's a question that I will always ask myself before, and is how to maintain a connection over time. So, Marie-Helene, would you like to ask that? Yes, of course. And I think I think on the poll, um, Kwan, that was probably right. one of the, the burning questions uh, in people's minds. And I think it's such a great one um, because I think everybody, to some extent, struggles with that. And I wanted to share a few tips from from my end. Um, the first thing that I think is really important once you've established that connection, you, you've, you've had that first conversation, be that in person or over the phone, I think it's really important to, to send a thank you note, but a thoughtful thank you note. And what I mean by that is putting together, again, in, in a crisp manner, that don't need to write paragraphs and paragraphs, but just really a, a few points on your takeaways from, from the catch-up, maybe something that you've learned 
or, or something that, you know, you've taken away from the call, just so that the other person can recognize that you were listening. And also that you're going to take action in some ways with regards to the advice or the conversation that you had. And the other thing that I used to do, because, you know, just to share my strategy on networking, uh, when I was looking for my first job, when I came here, I, I basically set myself this, I said on my calendar, I had my Gmail calendar all set up. And I said, every single day, I'm going to have either a meeting in person scheduled with a person, a coffee or something, or, and, or actually uh, a phone call. Um, and what I realized after a couple of weeks, I was thinking, my goodness, this is really hard to create that continuity in the connection, right? How do I, how do I organize myself to make sure that the first person I talk to, well, I'm going to come back to them. I'm going to nurture that relationship. So what I did on my Gmail calendar is I color coded it and I had follow-ups scheduled every two to three weeks with those people in my head to find a way to stay connected with them. And what I did was before I, I sent that, that follow on email, I looked up anything I could find. Could it be articles that were related to the conversation? Could it be events that were coming up that could be relevant for these people? Again, based on our conversation, could it be another person that I met with that they may be interested in connecting with? So something, something along those lines that really keeps the, I would call it, keeps the relationship warm, right? And, and the reason why I think that's really important is because you are showing that you, you care, first of all, you want to nurture that relationship. And also, when you have any successes, any outcomes in terms of how you're progressing, let's take in your job search, keep that person in mind and inform them of that. Because you know what? They will be super happy that you will have told them about that and will very likely come back to you either with a congratulatory note or with some additional advice. So really, these things I feel are, are really important to do, but just to keep a note of it, have a system where you can keep note of, of the follow-ons, um, I think is really important. A last thing I would just advise is, if you can, during that first connection, find something personal uh, during the conversation. It could be something related to that person's, maybe an upcoming birthday, a travel uh, in the mix, um, you know, some passion, a hobby that they have, um, a baby on the way maybe, I don't know, anything of that nature. Take note of that too because those will really help you in terms of maintaining that connection. So you can find ways to stay connected through, through work-related items and even better if you can find it also through, through that personal side as well, because it really helps to build that, that meaningful connection. So great. You touch all the important points, Mary Helen. And I learned from my mistake because um, at the beginning of my networking journey here, you know, because of the Asian culture, we tend to be so formal. And so I avoid to ask those kind of personal questions about like, do you have kids? You know, where were you born? Did you grow up here? You know, yeah. what do you like to do for fun? This summer is coming up. Do you have any plan? I didn't put that into the conversation, which is, you know, pretty common here in America. And surprisingly, it's such a great way to reconnect with people when you take notes on those personal sites. If you get to know how many kids they have, uh, their pet's name, we call that you crack the code of networking. Exactly. Exactly. So um, I think we, you know, cover all three important questions. And we also have some other backup questions as well. But we would like to open the stage for our friends, our attendees who are joining us right now. So if you want to turn up your microphone or leave your question in the chat box, please, all yours. Do you have any questions for us? or any insights or tips that you want to share with, you know, these small groups. We have about 15 people here. So such a great small group for this conversation. Um, I had a question. Excellent. Um, is this, let me see, um, is it Birkin or? Ashita. Ashita, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good. How are you, Kwan? I'm doing great. Good to see you here. It's good to be here. It's really nice to listen to all this advice since I am from MSN Finance. So this is so, so much something I can relate with. Perfect. So I had a question was, uh, it was basically, so I have been connecting with a lot of people recently and uh, I 
want to nurture the relationship as you've been telling so i don't think really talking about the job interview or internships in the first conversation is the way to go so uh, but i am not sure how to keep the conversation moving during the first i mean there are so many personal questions or professional questions you can ask so if they if i if i tell them that i want to have a phone call or a meeting with them so what should be basically the aim you know what should i really say that i am looking forward to with this call because that is also an important because they ask or they should know while i'm uh, you know really sending them that message or just talking to them so what would be the right way to approach this Mary Helen, would you like to share some tips here for us? Absolutely, and thanks for that question. I think it's it's a really really good question, and uh, I can share <clears throat> definitely what how I approached it when I was in total complete job search mode, um, coming out of grad school. And I, I, you know, the way I presented it was was simply yes, I was looking for work. Right? Let's not let's not shy around that fact. But um, I didn't want the conversation to be around that. What I said was I wanted to establish that first connection to learn more about what they're doing and more about the company that they're working for and, 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 and ask them questions around that, get their insights and get their advice. So the reason I, I positioned it that way was because, first of all, I think everybody loves to talk about themselves. I think that's something... Um, you know, really important and for people. And so I thought I could learn from them, right, regardless of that. Um, and also just getting a better insight into what they're doing, what their industry is all about, really helped me to keep more in a conversation to say, let's take the example. They say, you know, this is what I'm doing and, and, and this is the, the organization I'm working for. And if I see a lot of things that I like to hear about it, and then I see some, some areas of interest or some experience that I've had in the past that connects with what they're doing, that's when I would bring it, I would really like to explore this further. I, I see some, some areas where I've got some skills or I learned some skills in that space. How could I further develop that um, in getting into a profession like yours? How would that work out? But again, not saying, look, I'm looking for a job, right? I wouldn't present it that way at all. So really in terms of positioning it as exploring, understanding, first of all, hearing at that person. And the other thing I did was I always said in my emails that I would like to meet with him for 15, 20 minutes. And, and that I did that very strategically because coming back to people's schedules and so forth, when people read that, they think, well, I've got 15, 20 minutes to spare. I, I can do that. And oftentimes, interestingly, it went way beyond that. So people were actually really happy to have those conversations and to share. So, um, so that, would be, that would be sort of my, my, my couple of recommendations here in terms of the positioning of the conversation. But happy to hear from Nanda and Kwan as well what, what your thoughts were in that regard. I mean, I would like to add that in my case, I did the similar tips. But for example, I start... I start to, in the email, for example, the follow-up when I say thank you, if I forget to mention some skills that maybe would be a key asset for the job they are doing it. So for example, thank you for making the time to speak with me today. And you know, as you mentioned that you are working in this XYZ project, it reminds me that I have done super similar this thing and they can say, and you can also put, I would be happy to help in anything you would like or happy to introduce you to another person or to. So it's, it's not like, okay, I get that information from you. Also say, okay, I can help you if you have anything. And then they will value your intention. And anytime they will have something, maybe they will think on you and they will reach out to you. Like, oh, you know, I know that my team is looking for a person with these qualities. And also, I also like the 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to share a very funny story with a networking call one time. It was 20 minutes and we connect so well. He worked at Citibank right now. He's like actually an assistant VP. And we realized we like the same festival concerts of EDM. Yeah. So we start talking about finance and his experience and then he asked me like, what do you do on your free time? Because it's also good to emphasize in the financial industry, sometimes people forget about their personal life, like their work-life balance. And it's a very important thing. Like they are looking to you that, okay, 
you are doing school, you are studying, working, but what do you do besides that? So another key point or tip would be you are going to their LinkedIn profile and they see maybe they like the same football team that you like. So boom, you build report them, you know, like, oh yeah, so last week I went to see the match. Oh, you like the Mets? Yes, me too. And then you build that connection. So that's a good a tip that I would say that it works for me most of the time. And you're so authentic, Fernanda. I think that is the killer of your networking skills, right? Because you're so authentic. You don't try to be someone who's not, you're not. And yeah, you, you have your passion and share your personal side. That is amazing. Yeah, I love one of, you know, Adam Grant's podcast as well about uh, how you can like have that instantly con connection with someone. One of the thing is to show, to reveal yourself as well. Uh, find something in common and then reveal your own personal personality, your personal passion. And I would, you know, Two of you have come up with such a great tips for Ishida today. So I just want to summarize all of this. First of all, show that you respect that time, right? Uh, uh, emphasize on the time that you will just, you know, this, this is, remember, this is just the first message that they got from you. They don't know you yet. So just show that you respect that time, 15 to 20 minutes call only, you know, uh, have a clear introduction and then, when you're on the call, show appreciation, right? First, thank you, show appreciation. And one thing that I also see, you know, uh, common mistakes of so many uh, students, not just international students, is about not having a clear goal. When you are about to use someone's time to help you, you definitely need to come to them with a clear goal right that job is not to help you figure out your goal that job is to help if they like you they will want to help you achieve your goal so come to that meeting with a clear goal on who you are what you have and we call that personal brand absolutely awesome all right so we have more questions from Birkin please Birkin how are you today do I pronounce uh, your name uh right uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all the insight uh, that you that you've given. Uh, I would like to ask uh, specifically about uh, the fact that uh, so many of us, uh, because uh, because of COVID or other reasons, in my case, other reasons are physically constrained, and we cannot really uh, we can we cannot really travel, and uh, the 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 place that we that we are at right now is not geographically close to any big conferences, etc. So, uh, a lot of our networking has to be done cold, you know, cold emails, cold LinkedIn messages, things like that. So, uh, I I cannot really ask a person, you know, in an uh, in a email, what's the name of your uh, dog? But so, what's an appropriate way to break the ice? Uh, without making the email too long uh, in, in, in an email. So that's a good way to do that. Yeah, I, I can kickstart and Mary Helen would love uh, to hear additional tips from you as well. Um, we, we talked about doing some research about that person before reaching out to them, right? For example, with Fernanda's case, she talked about someone that just recently launched a podcast channel. So in that email, you know, to break the ice, talk about them, talk about what you really like and admire about them. And then give a little bit pitch about yourself. You know, I, I am a recent graduate, MBA graduate from this school and recently uh, building my career in this field. And I would love to ask for your advice and learn more about your journey to your current position, you know, and uh, just specify the time. So I know that you're busy. So 15 to 20 minutes call would be highly appreciated. Uh, do you have any, some time like this week or next week, you can put that in the email, this is a ice breaking technique. Uh, when I, even me today, every week, when I want to connect with someone, I send those typical, you know, message that um, to break the ice and most of the time they respond to me. So Mary Helen would love to hear from you. Yeah, I would add to, to Kwan's recommendations here. You know, it's a, uh... It's a tough. It's a tough environment. At the same time, we've got we've got the beauty that we're all we're all living in this environment. So, you know, the the, 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 the yeah, I, I would just say the 
um, everybody's kind of on that same playing field right now. So I think I think you've got to look at the, the benefits, the opportunities that we have right now uh, operating in this remote environment. And the other thing I would add is, you know, when we refer to warm, warm calls, warm connections, I think another an, another thing to think about is when you're on LinkedIn, for example, or, you know, you, you've identified someone you want to connect with. Try to see also if there are some connections in common that you have on LinkedIn with that person, because there may be someone that you're connected with that that person's also connected with and where you have a good relationship and that person can facilitate the introduction as well. And I think that's a really, really nice way to get in front of people. And for the students out here, I would also say really leverage the network of your alumni, because that's another fantastic and super powerful way to to make those those connections, but in a very warm way, despite being in this remote environment that we're all in. So that would be just a couple of things that I would add there to, to Quan's points. I would like to also add a little thing, like for me personally, COVID was such a, like everything is virtual, was such an advantage for me. For example, I am from Albany, but I joined Financial Women's Association, which before it was in person in New York City. So if it wouldn't be virtual, I wouldn't be able to attend to the meetings, do the networking. And regarding how you could send an email to a person, you can also join organizations. And for example, Marie Helen helped me so much during this journey. So I used to reach out to people and say, hi, how are you doing? I know that you are a member too of Financial Women Association. We are part of the same organization, of part of the same committee. And I would love to connect, learn more about your background. Or for example, Mary Helen helped me so many times remember when I was trying to apply for grad school, for jobs. She used to introduce me to other networks and it's better because it's not like it's just a random person that you are reaching out to. And at first when you start, it seems like impossible how I'm going to find someone if I don't have anyone, but you would see how small is this world? Well, in my case, at least in the financial services, everyone is connecting with everyone. One. For example, Marie Helene connected me with this lady from Prospanica that is a Hispanic organization and then she connected me to another person from Ecuador who ended up being my mentor for six months and then he connected me to this other organization. So it's just find this first answer. Like as I always say and always thank you Marie Helene to be my first connection who always opened me to so many doors. You just need one person, one person that will help you to build that spider web for your succeed. Well, I, th I would say thank you to Quan for introducing me to Fernanda. <laughs> like, it, all, it, all, it all is connected. I think it's such a great point, Fernanda, you make about, about thinking about professional associations. Um, you know, I can speak, I can speak all day about the Financial Women's Association, but just, you know, just for awareness, there are so many out there that are open to students. And to Fernanda's point, it's, it's such a fantastic way to develop a really niche network of your own. And, and just a plug in, I currently work at New York Life in their ventures team. And I joined six months ago, you know, like a lot of people joining companies remotely. And all this happened, you know, really thanks to the power of the network that I had with the Financial Women's Association. So just, just think about that as well. Um, I'm happy to speak afterwards to anybody who's interested in learning more about the FWB particularly, but it's, it's really a, a great way, not just for you to, to learn more about what's happening in a specific industry um, based on your interests, but these associations really help you to create meaningful connections as a network. So just an additional plug to, to think about in terms of expansion and you know, expanding your network opportunities that way. Thank you so much for all your time, your advice. It, it has been so learnful. Even if I'm in this path, I, every day I feel like I learn something new from everyone. So I would like to ask if you have any final words to share with us, any tips, any resources you would like to give? Well, I'll go first. I, I had a, a one slide that uh, has some links and you know I wanted to, again, uh, share with you all the Financial Women's Association that we just talked about. Um, I, as I said, very happy to connect with all of you on LinkedIn afterwards and, 
and to answer any questions you have on that. FW is actually open to men as well, just so you know, we have, we strongly believe in, in men supporting us as well and advancing women. Um, and then also I, I put a link there in for Toastmasters International. Um, it's, it's something that I've, I've definitely learned from a lot. I joined in the midst of COVID Toastmasters because it was all online and it still is for many clubs. Um, so they're all across the country. So you can, you can join, you know, clubs wherever you want. It's such a fantastic, powerful way to think about improving your public speaking skills, which can just be so valuable for you at any point in time in your life. And I'm thinking specifically when it comes to interviewing and just getting more comfortable with that. Um, and the two other things I put here on this slide are, are two books. Uh, so one is called Build Your Green Network by Kelly Hoey. She gives really interesting tips and ways to, to build your network, especially when you think about social media. And as we all know, it's so important, especially in this day and age. And she also has really, really cool podcast series about networking, which I've listened to on multiple occasions. And some of them are great refreshers and some of them are really interesting new insights that I'm constantly learning about. So another one, but I wanted to also highlight a very classic one about networking and how to, how to build good relationships. It's how to win friends and influence people. Um, Dale Carnegie is, I'm sure some of you in the room or many of you have heard of Dale Carnegie. But it's a really good, a good book to to read and to reread and to re re read about uh, about his recommendations on how to build really powerful, powerful connections with people. So that's my those are my few resources I wanted to share with the group today. Those are amazing resources, Mary Helen, and I recommend you to reach out to Mary Helen to learn more about those organizations too. The FWA, if you dream to join the financial services industry in the future and people don't like participants do not need to be women right uh, a gentleman can join the the organization as well mary helen absolutely we have what we call a men's alliance committee and, mm. and this is uh, this is really destined because we you know it's an organization that's been around for 65 plus years so um mm. definitely very legacy and one of the first out there but you know, one of the things we realize is that it's wonderful for women to be around the table and talking about the issues that women face. Mm -hmm. But if we don't have men with us at the table and listening to us and hearing us out and, you know, recognizing and supporting and advocating for us, well, we're not going to go very far. So, so hence why we definitely welcome men to the table as well with, with the FWA so men can become members as well. That's amazing. Yes. And for women, we also need to have support because we know how hard it is, right, for us to uh, crack that uh, the glass ceiling. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Toastmaster as well. I also was was the guest, uh, you know, for one of your events and I love it. So I recommend the students to check into the Toastmasters International. This will help you improve your public speaking. And the public speaking networking call is has something in similar as well. So let's explore on that. I also have Dale Carnegie uh, book right <laughs> behind me here. So strongly recommend that. And I'm going to check out the other book that you recommend, Build Your Dream Network. I love that. Thank you for all these resources and your time today, Mary Helen. I could not ask for more. You always say yes to every, you know, <laughs> things, every connection that I ask you to like connect with the students. So I appreciate it so much. My and pleasure. For, yes, yes, um, really feel grateful. And Fernanda, thank you as well for being here and sharing, sharing your experience with our friends today. You know, I am inspired by your story every day as well. You know, not just you learn from me, I also learn from you. you know? <laughs> so thank you Same so much here. for being here. Yes, and all the students today, we all here, me, Mary Helen, Fernanda, share all the tips, advice that we didn't get from anyone, but we got that from our own mistakes and lesson learned. We share everything with you today, but you are the one who need to take action. Okay, so take notes, get all of these resources, and let's be brave and get out there and let the world know that you exist. Okay, I am very proud of you and I'm rooting for you. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me through LinkedIn. 
I hope that we already connected on LinkedIn. If not, please send me a connection request. Yeah, I I'm always to accept you. you uh, 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 add that before I got Deloitte, at least I got rejected like 13 times for a big four companies, like at least 14 times. Even wow. when I, I applied this, this time, my mom was like, why are you going to apply again? Like I'm, I am already know like every semester rejection, every semester since I came to the U.S. Mm-hmm. And I knew this was going to be my time. So don't give up. You never know when you just need one jazz. Yes, Absolutely. all you need is just one yes. <laughs> yes. All right. This is the last webinar, Land Your Dream Job webinar of the year, you guys. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today, asking good questions, and let us keep in touch. If I don't talk to you again, have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. <laughs> all right. So lots of holiday event coming up is the best time for networking. Absolutely. Thank you.